Hi there, you're with Terry from Bonsai Tree and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to repot carnivorous plants. Before we do the repotting, you'll need to get a few things ready. The most important of these is the soil, of course. The good news is that we already have a mix that is ideal for most carnivorous plants, which is our carnivorous soil mix. This blended ready-to-use product is a combination of Lithuanian peat and imported perlite. We also do sell perlite as a standalone product. This is an imported perlite product which tends to be of a higher quality than generally available locally. It is a component that you can safely use in any soil mix for carnivorous plants. It will not alter the pH value, it does add a considerable amount of water retention, it aids drainage as it is inorganic and retains structure in the soil. Pumice is a product that we import from Japan and it is essentially a very much harder form of perlite. It too retains moisture, will not alter the pH value. Being much harder than perlite, you will find that it's not as fragile and will therefore not produce as much dust as perlite does. Akadama is a product which we import from Japan. It has many unique qualities which make it ideal for growing certain nepenthes as well as Drosera in. It can also be included in a specialist mix for Cephalotus. Kanuma is another medium which we import from Japan. It is a little bit harder than perlite but softer than pumice and has a very low pH value which makes it acidic. Another imported product is Lava Stone and as the name suggests it's a volcanic byproduct. It is another specialist component which could be added to Nepenthes mixes as well as Cephalotus and several others. Lika is produced from fired clay granules which are then crushed. It is only slightly water retentive but does contribute to the structure of any soil mix. Lika will not leach any nutrients into the soil. So essentially you could see it as a substitute for many items such as silica sand. It is also considerably lighter than many such inorganic components. The sphagnum moss which we sell is not to be confused with live moss. It is however a very water retentive component and could be used in many different carnivorous soil mixes. Once you have your soil ready, you need to make a choice of which container you're going to use. Although you can certainly use containers of various materials such as metals as well as fired ceramics, plastic containers are generally preferred as they will not leach anything into the soil. And they're also available in a very wide variety of sizes and shapes and colors. So let's explore some of the options available to you which you can also order from our online store. These terracotta plastic containers are a very popular choice. It's available in a 9 cm for smaller plants and 12.5 cm for older plants or larger plants. If you are using the smaller container, it's very easy to pot up directly into the next size up when you do your repotting without disturbing the root ball. This next 9 cm container is one of my favorites for Venus flytraps. As you can see, it is the same size as the smaller of the terracotta pots that I showed you, but it has a much deeper container, which is great for allowing the roots to develop, but also ensuring you're not going to get a root rot situation. For larger plants, such as Saracenias and Nepenthes, we also have larger containers of a similar sort of ratio of depth to width. There's plenty of drainage holes which will allow water to be wicked up by the growing medium or alternatively for the water to drain out depending on the type of plant that you're growing. This container is just a size up from the previous one which I showed you. All the containers that I've shown you till now have had solid walls. However, net and air pots have become very popular of late. The slots in the walls allow for faster drainage and also for an improved drying of the growing medium. The one on the left is a heavy duty net pot, which is considerably more durable than the first one I showed you, which is locally produced. These three holes in the lip is a neat feature as you can attach wire or string to it and hang the pot. These containers are also available in two sizes. Should your plant outgrow the first, then simply potting it up into the larger container is a great solution. These slightly more robust air pots are also available and they come in different sizes too. 
The last container I'm going to show you is our hanging basket. These small indents on the lip indicate where you are to clip the hooks onto or the hanger. This raised bottom actually forms a sort of reservoir where water can sit in the growing medium at the bottom and feed or wick up into the greater volume of soil. The hanging basket is the ideal container for more mature nepenthes. It's now spring and the ideal time to repot Venus flytraps. I'm going to be using the small 7.5 cm and a 12.5 cm container to plant into. I'm going to be using our standard carnivorous soil mix, which is a blend of Lithuanian peat as well as perlite, as this is a very good medium for Venus flytraps. It's advisable to ensure that the media is thoroughly wetted before use. If the media is used completely dry, it's going to struggle to wick up moisture. Remove your plant label and set it aside in a secure position. Gently remove the Venus flytrap clump from the container. Carefully separate the plants. You can use a tweezers or other similar implement to remove any old dead leaves. This is what a healthy root system on a Dionea or Venus flytrap should look like. Should you find some decaying plant material attached to the rhizome, it's best to remove that. Place some of the prepared growing medium into the container, but take care not to compact it. Use a root pick or similar implement to create a hole which is large enough to receive the plant. Carefully direct the roots into the hole that you've prepared. Keep the plant at the same soil level as it was. Once the plant is in position, bring some soil underneath the leaves and ensure that there are no cavities. Return the plant marker or you're certain to forget what the name of this clone is. You can then return the potted plant into the tray of water. I'm now going to return to the clump of plants and separate some of these offshoots and place them in their own individual containers. As these plants are considerably smaller, they can go into a much smaller container for the moment. Make a small hole to receive the plant. Carefully drop the roots into the hole and then firm up the soil around the plant, taking care to keep the leaves above the soil. Replace the label and place the plant in water. It's a good idea to prepare your Saracenia before repotting it. It is unnecessary to completely remove the previous season's pitches from purpurea type hybrids. However, those which have dried out can be removed. As you can see on this example, all of the previous season's growth has been removed and in fact the new pitches for the spring have already started to grow. I'll be using our standard carnivorous soil mix for this repot. It's always advisable to ensure that the media is thoroughly wetted to ensure that it is able to wick up water. I'll be potting the plant back into the same container it's currently in. Gently remove the plant from the container. Inspect the root system to ensure there are no rotted roots. You can then remove the surface moss and weeds. Old rotted portions of the rhizome can be removed. As this growing medium is still in very good condition, it's unnecessary to completely wash it away. The purpose of this repot is actually to ensure that there's sufficient space for the offshoots of the Saracenia to develop. Be careful not to pot the rhizome too deeply. Ideally, it should be at the same planting depth as it was previously. Take care when filling up the pot with growing medium that there are no cavities created. After the final tidy up, you can then return the plant to the water trays. I will repot this seed grown Nepenthes into a larger container so that it can develop. I will also add some live sphagnum moss as surface dressing. First tidy the plant by cutting off any old dead leaves and pitches. Remove the tag and set it aside. Gently remove the plant from the container. Get rid of any moss. Remove the remainder of the soil. As you can see, these plants don't have much of a root system. Now you could of course use our standard carnivorous soil mix. However, as this is a special plant, I'm going to be using our premium component, Akadama, as well as a taller container which is going to promote better drainage. Keep the soil level the same as it was. I can now apply the live sphagnum moss, which is essentially just really a surface decoration.
When watering a plant in Akadama for the first time, ensure that the water runs clear. I'm now going to pot another Nepenthes into a hanging basket. And for this repot, I'm going to be using our standard coniferous soil mix. Make sure that you wet the medium properly before you use it. Remove any dead pitches or leaves from the plant. Fill the basket with media. Use the existing pot to make an indentation in the media. Gently remove the plant from the container and drop it into the hole that you've prepared. Lightly firm up the media around the plant and clip on the hangers. Thoroughly water the plant and hang it in the desired spot. Cephalotus is a plant that you don't want to repot too often. The best time of the year to repot these plants is when they are just emerging from winter dormancy. For specimen plants, I'd recommend a premium mix consisting of lava stone, akadama and lika in equal ratios. However, for this plant I'll be using our standard carnivorous soil mix. Remove the label and set it aside. Gently remove the plant from the container. Get rid of any surface moss which may actually hinder growth, as well as any old pitchers. It's advisable to not completely bare root the plant. Replace the label and thoroughly water the plant once more. It's really not necessary to replace the growing media for pinguiculas too frequently. However, for this repot, I'm going to be using a piece of lava stone. In conventional pinguicular mixes, pumice is featured, as well as lava stone and perlite. It's also important to add lime, as pinguiculas prefer a very alkaline medium. Find an angle at which the stone is stable, then hollow out a small depression in which the plant can grow. Place some prepared growing medium in this depression. Collect your plant. As you can see, there's not much of a root system to speak of. However, gently work these fine roots into the media. The planting will be slightly fragile in the beginning, but the plant will become quite established. Place your completed planting in a tray of water. Penguiculars grow very easily from leaf pullings. Simply ensure that the white tip of the leaf is covered with media. 